How to start a new City Skylines 2 city with Paradox mods and a custom map. Let's get started. So welcome back to the City Skylines 2 main menu. If you have an updated game, you have the Paradox mods option. Click on the Paradox mods button and click on playsets. You are able to create a custom City Skylines 2 mod list based on the current map you're playing on. You can also download maps and other dependencies. Once we have all of our City Skylines 2 mods in place, what we need to do next is click on New Game. Now, if you have an updated City Skylines 2 game, you're going to have default maps and custom maps. The default maps come with the City Skylines 2 game, and custom maps are all the maps that were downloaded from the Paradox Store online. The map I'd like to go with is called Sunset Beach. Now, if we look closer at the statistics, it is a North American build. It has a climate of 51 to 87 degrees, so that kind of reminds me of Florida here in the United States. Then you're also going to notice here we have 37% buildable area, and we have all of our outside connections such as road, trains, shipping, airplanes, electricity, and water and sewage connections. We also have all four of the natural resources, which is fertile land, forest, or and oil. Click on select map. Now we need to name our new city. What I'll do is I'll create a YouTube community post and we can vote on the name of the city. After you name your city, you're going to have a few more options. You have left hand traffic, natural disasters, unlock all, unlimited money. Right now I do have natural disasters clicked on and I also disabled all the tutorials. Once you're done with that, you're going to click on start game. Welcome to the sunset beach custom map that we downloaded from the Paradox Mod Store. And this map, it really excites me because A, it's flat, but B, we have tons and tons of different options. I love the rivers, I love the custom port that we're able to build, and I'm really excited to start this map. The first thing I want to get into is the map texture replacer. This is a mod from the City Skylines 2 Paradox mod store. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the home of chameleon TBN map texture replacer. What this does is any of the grass or any of the rocks, soil, water and whatnot, it will help change the theme of the overall map. Next, I want to show you the historical start mod. So this is what City Skylines 1 had. It enables us to have buses, trains, trams, boats, and airports right off the bat, and we no longer have to wait to unlock with developmental points. So now that we have our map theme in place and we have the historical start, I've reviewed what that is, what we need to do next is we need to start our City Skylines 2 layout. So I chose this part of the Sunset Beach map because it has highway access and it has train access. What I want to do is create a train centric community. The reason behind that is when you're starting a City Skylines 2 city, you do not have the highways unlocked. So since we don't have any options of creating an intersection or anything like that, we are going to use trains to help start our city. So now that we have everything in place and you kind of know the background of where my City Skylines 2 game is at, what we need to start is a City Skylines 2 road layout. What we're going to do first is use a medium sized road because this is going to be a main arterial road. What we'll do is we're going to start our medium road. We're going to move up a tiny bit, a little bit away from the highway itself. And what I'm trying to do is get a straight road, which we're going to mirror the highway and the railroad itself. So we're going to create a 60 unit road on one side, then measure how many units down to the highway it is. You can see it's about 12.22 units. So what we'll do is we're going to go to the other side of our highway. We're going to go up about 12 to 13 units. There you go. I clicked on 12 and what we'll do is we're going to start mirroring the other side. So there is our node that we created and what we're going to do is move up 27 units. We're going to click that down. Then this is where things get a little tricky. You can use the continuous road tool, but I think a simple curve is 100% the best way to go. And you can see here, we created a really nice simple curve. So everything so far is looking very smooth and looks very orderly. So what we need to do next is we need to plan out this little community itself. So we're going to go back to roads. We're going to get click on a smaller road and what we'll do is we're going to lay out the residential area. So you're going to see here we have a river. So instead of building just a crummy grid, so we'll start the residential area. We're going to move up 26 units 
along the river. You can see here both sides of the radius. That is going to be the full grid amount. So I wanted to make sure we weren't in the river. Building houses in the river is not a good look. So I'm trying to make sure that using the continuous road tool that the radius of the road is outside the river so that we're not building houses inside the river itself. So what I'll do next is I will speed this up so you guys see exactly what I'm talking about. I'm just using the continuous road tool along the river itself. So now that we have the exterior roads in place, we need to build the interior part of a road. So what I'm going to build next is a 64 unit road that is following along our main arterial road. And I'm going to do that on the other side with a 40 unit road. What I'm doing is I'm trying to get the zoning to match up where it's going to be very tight and very compact. To complete the road, we'll use the continuous road tool and we'll make sure that we connect it up to have a nice looking curve. Now, I know what you're thinking right now. You're going to say, well, are we going to build another city skylines to grid? Well, that's what we're going to try to avoid. So what I'm doing next is I'm going to add another 63 unit road. And I'm going to follow the same path we just created for the other road. And then we're going to try to deviate from the actual grid itself. So again, we have a 63 unit road and a 37 unit road, and then we will connect it up with a, the continuous road tool. By the way, I do love the road tools in city skylines too. I am a big fan and going back to city skylines one would be really hard because I do love the road tool so much, but overall, Everything looks really, really nice, and I'm really happy with the way things are looking. Now let's, so now let's break up this grid. So what we need to do next is we need to add a couple small road intersections where our arterial road, which is the medium-sized road, connects with our small roads and people can come and go from a residential area. So what I'm doing right now is I'm adding a 90 degree road that cuts right through all three of our roads and goes to the very end of the river. What I'm going to do next is I will add one more intersection to the left. I think for right now that four connections to the arterial road is good enough. So what I'm going to do next is I'm just going to add another 90 degree road and just connect up the residential area itself. Next, what I'm going to do is now that we're out of the grid itself, what I'm going to do is I want to create additional roads that will connect to the back part of our residential area, but I also want to make it unique. So I created one road that went off to the left a little bit using the continuous road tool. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to use the same road. So about 15 units and I'm going to create a slight diagonal using the continuous road tool. And we're going to go to the very back part of our map. And you can see here the continuous road tool, it will turn. Now you do have to mess with the continuous road tool because right there, it does not look great. So what I did was I zoomed in a little bit and I redid it and connect it right before that three way intersection. This opening in our city, I do have plans for it but we're not going to build it up just yet because, well, we don't have any parks available. But here's our basic city skylines to layout. What I'm going to do lastly is finish up the layout itself. So what I'm doing is I'm adding roads that will keep continuing the pattern in our residential area and make sure that we will have additional zoning for more houses. We don't want all of those areas in green just not to have houses itself except for that middle area that i talked about so we're trying to get as much residential in this area as possible so now that all of our small road residential is in place you're going to see here we have our green patch which we have something special planned for it and we have a road that goes directly down the center of it so what we're going to do is we're going to grab a pedestrian street. This is a street where cars are not allowed. So we're going to upgrade both of those small roads and we're going to upgrade them so people are able to walk. And this is going to be a little commercial district where people can go to restaurants, go to bars, go shopping. And this is going to be the centerpiece of our town. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to name this Main Street USA. Just so I remember, all right, make sure Sports Monkey, you build commercial on this part of your city. So now that our road layout is in place, what we're going to do next is I mentioned we wanted a train centric community. 
So what we'll do next is we're going to go over to the transportation tab and we're going to click on the double train tracks. And what we'll do next is we're going to go back to our main arterial road. What we'll do is we'll create a double train track. We'll go three units up and we're, we're going to create a 60 unit train track road on this side to mirror the highway and the medium size road itself. Now we're going to do that on the other side. So what we'll do is we'll grab a 37 unit road and there we go. Now we need to connect up the curve itself. Now I am a big fan of the continuous road tool. Sometimes this does look a little funky. I actually think the simple curve would have worked better, but in this situation, the continuous curve, it looks really good compared to the other road options that we have so far, like our medium sized road and our highway, the curve itself looks really, really nice. So now that we have that in place, what do we need to do next? We need to make sure that the train tracks themselves are connected to the main line itself. So what I'm doing next is I'm using Anarchy to create a very small bridge. Now I could have created an incline, a slight incline to the bridge, but I chose not to. The water is still flowing underneath that river. So I decided to go with it. Plus we are using Anarchy. So that was fine with me. So what I'm going to do next is connect up our city skylines to train tracks. So I'm going to go up a few units and I'm going to use the continuous. Nope. Excuse me. I'm going to use complex curve to connect this up. So you're going to see here, I'm going to click left click and I'm going to try to get it lined up as best as possible. And then we will use the continuous road tool just to finish it off and connect it up really nicely. There you go. Continuous road tool. And now just finish it up with a nice simple curve where it looks like it's not too harsh of a turn itself. The first one, I honestly, my first attempt, I did not like itself. So what I did was I redid it and there you go. That's a little bit better of a turn. Now what I'm going to do next is in city skylines too, sometimes you need to have the roads connect both ways. So what I did was I added that little bit of a harsh curve, but that's only because city skylines too forces you to have your trains connected both ways. So I just was following the game itself. So now let's go over to the other side of our train tracks and connect it up. Make sure everything is a okay. So what we're going to do next is we still have the continuous road tool, but we're going to use the straight line tool and we're just going to mirror the highway again. And just, you know, I like the idea of mirroring the highway because it gives it a nice uniform, clean look. So we're just mirroring that highway. Remember, these are train tracks, so we're not really concerned about zoning. We're just trying to make it look nice and aesthetically pleasing. So again, here I'm using the continuous road tool. Like I said to you before, continuous road tool is one of my favorite things to use in City Skylines too. So you can see here we have train tracks. So what we'll do is keep using that continuous road tool and we want to create a nice left hand turn with it's a 42 unit road and then we're going to connect it up to our main line itself. Now here again, this is the cheeky turn that it in real life, this would not happen. But the only reason why we have that turn in place is because again, city skylines two might make it mandatory. So trains can come and go from our city skylines to train station itself. Now that we have our rail line in place, what we need to build next is a rail yard. So what the rail yard does, it enables our city skylines Two game to create and render trains. So here's the rail yard. It is pretty big and I want to make sure it's kind of out of the way of our build because we don't want residents literally living next to this. So I found an area on this part of the map, which is far away or far enough away from a residential area where it really won't matter. Now you can see here on the screen in front of you, the contour lines in this area are not good. So what I'm doing over here is I'm kind of cheating and I'm using the terrain tool. I'm just kind of flattening the land so that everything, you know, will just, it won't look lumpy and bumpy. And we just want to make sure everything looks tight and looks good. 
Now that we have our flat surface in place, we'll use the soften road, or excuse me, using the soften terrain tool just to make sure everything kind of looks like it's back to normal and organic. So here's our rail yard. Now we want to make sure we're placing this away from everything. And I'm just making sure that it's in a good enough spot where we can connect up the rail yard and not have an issue. Plus, it does show that we have to make a road connection, so we need to leave enough space for a small or medium-sized road to make sure it can connect up with it. So there is our rail yard, and yeah, we just plopped it down. So what we need to do next is we need to make sure that the rail yard is connected to our main rail line. So I'm gonna use the double rail tool, and we're gonna move out 90 degrees, and we went about 27 units. So use the single road and just connect these up. There, I'm gonna be honest with you guys, there is no beautiful way of connecting up this rail yard. I know City Planner also mentioned that, but I, I honestly have not seen a beautiful rail yard connection. So what I'm doing over here is, remember, this rail yard is away from everything. So aesthetically, I'm okay with just connecting things like that and just connect it up so we'll have basically a functioning rail yard. So now that we have all that in place, now what we need to do next is connect the rail yard to our mainland. So if we go back over to contour lines, you can see this is lumpy, bumpy, and gross. There's no easy way around. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm going to go back to our terrain tool and we're gonna to go to the slope terrain tool. We're going to right click and we are going to slope downwards. So we need to make sure, and yep, downwards to the actual train tracks itself. Now we wanna make sure that our decline isn't too insane. Like you do not wanna have a five or 6% incline or decline, I guess, for the rail yard itself. So what I'm aiming for is about 3%. And you can see here, the slope tool did a really nice job. Very happy with that. Now let's grab that train track and let's see what the incline, well in this situation, what the incline is. So I'm using the continuous road tool. So far it is a 1% incline, which is completely okay. Now you're gonna see here we have about Four, it's averaging about 4.3%, which is okay. Not not great, but okay. And now we're just trying to create the road up. Th there we go. We went up the hill. Now let's create the connections themselves. So that was about 3.7% when I did actually place down that straight double train track. So what I'm doing next is I'm smoothing out the area where we're gonna connect up our main line, well basically connect up the rail yard and the main line. So we're gonna use the sloping tool again so we're not having such a harsh decline. Again, we're shooting for about 3.7% give or take. So we're gonna do that. You can see here, I made a mistake. I literally clicked it the wrong way and obviously using the slope tool, look at that, I sloped it the wrong direction. So what I'm doing next is I'm fixing that. I did end up sloping it correctly. And yeah, be careful when you're sloping it. When you're watching City Planner, like he does this amazing and makes it look super easy. So just be careful and take your time. So now let's connect up our double train track to our mainland. So, so far we are looking at a 3.8% decline, which is fantastic. 3.8 is not bad at all, especially when it's a straightaway. Trains are more apt to, to be able to do that. And there we go. Oh, and our right-hand turn was a minus 1.9% decline. Wow. So that worked out really, really nicely. I think that is definitely very realistic compared to what is actually happening in real life. So what I'm doing next is I'm using the soften terrain tool just to make it look like, hey, these train tracks have been here forever and you know we didn't completely tear up the map itself. So, so far, so good. I do like the look of our train lines themselves, like the basic look of the tracks themselves. So I'm very, very happy with it. Now, what we're gonna do next is we need to connect up the rail yard itself. So what I wanna build is a small road around and we're gonna follow those train tracks all the way up back to our residential area because, well, people need to actually work at the rail yard. So let's speed this up and let's finish this up.
Okay, so now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna speed this up a little bit because we already saw this, but what I'm doing is I'm using the small road itself, and what I'm doing is I'm building the small road next to the railroad tracks that we already flanned out in Terraform. So we know that you know the incline and decline of the land itself is already pretty much flattened out and pretty, you know, pretty decently realistic. So I'm pretty happy with that. All right. So we have our rail yard connected. What do we need to do next when building in City Skylines 2? What I want to do next is I want to start to add the utilities part of our City Skylines 2 build. So I want to add electricity. Now I know you can import electricity, but since we have $312,000, what I want to do is I want to build a small coal power plant. Yes, I think the $100,000 long term is worth it. Um, it just depends on what you want to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place the coal power plant near our rail yard. We want to make sure all of our services are out of the way. And fantastic. We are now a tiny village, which is awesome. We got $600,000 and we unlocked developmental points. So there is our coal power plant. We put it right along the river. You can see here it generates about 20 megawatts of electricity and will cost us $12,208 a month. Now, next, we need to get into water. Generally speaking, we need to have water treatment for fresh water. Then we need to make sure that we have a sewage outlet, which will get rid of all of our sewage. But for the time being, I just want to create, I will import and export our water system because it is extremely cheap. Electricity was kind of ex expensive. So that's why we built the coal power plant. So, so far, so good. Everything is being built as planned. So now we have our utilities in place. What I want to do is I want to get back to our main street USA. And what I want to do is I want to get into the modding and detailing of city skylines too. So what I did was I went over to the find it mod and I typed in surface. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a custom city skylines to train station. So what we're going to do is we're going to use tile surface number three and we're going to kind of build and make sure that our train station is going to be a part of the main street usa and be a part of a main feature of the town itself so you you can see here we created a brand new surface and i really do like the tile surface itself we do need to make sure our tr custom train station is connected to our town itself so what i'm doing right now is I'm using the walking paths and I'm just connecting the paths to the train tracks themselves because citizens will be able to use the train tracks to get over to the paths themselves. Now you're gonna see here, I needed to fix our surface and move it closer to the path itself. You are able to stretch the tiles just like things, um, you know, if you're building the specialized industries or building a district itself. Next, what I want to do is, all right, you can see we have two crosswalks that lead to Main Street USA. So what I'm going to do is take off snapping. I'm going to build invisible paths here in City Skyline. So this is part of the mods. So I have two paths going from both crosswalks straight up to our custom bus station. Then I did create a 25 unit invisible path that went directly to both of the walking paths themselves. So now that we have everything connected to our City Skylines 2 custom train terminal, what we want to do is we want to detail it. So in City Skylines 2, we have the prop line tool. And what I'll do is I love these small bushes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to detail both sides. So both sides of this train station, we're going to have a very uniform look. So I added anarchy to make sure we can get as close as possible to the path. So on one side we have bushes and then we're going to do that. We're going to mirror the exact other side. So again, we're looking for uniformity. I do love how these bushes will bring the tile and everything some major color. And I'm very, very happy with the way that looks. So our main feature of this train station is going to be large fountain Number two, so when you do get off the train, it kind of this the train station kind of reminds me of the TV show Westworld where people just got on and off and there really wasn't truly a platform. And this is what we're kind of going off of. So if you've ever seen Westworld, you know, 
you know you know when people are getting on and off that train you know what happened so we have that water fountain in place now what we're going to do next is we're going to keep adding a few more bushes because you know you could see the gray from the tile and then you could see the green pop from the bushes themselves so again we're just doing additional additional detailing because and we're leaving that spot open because remember we have invisible paths and there we go we hit that actually really perfectly wow without seeing the invisible paths we actually detailed that up really nicely so now let's keep customizing this train terminal so what we'll do next is we're going to go into find it and we're going to grab we're going to create a few different benches because people hey this is we're creating a community area and this is going to be a main feature of this town so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a few different benches, at least four benches on each side. I'm trying my best to space them out correctly. For some reason, the prop line tool, I was not able to use it because it made them really, it made the benches really awkwardly angled. So I'm manually adding these. So don't yell at me too much. I was just eyeballing it as best as I could. So now that we have all of the benches in place, we have four on each side. What we want to do next is we want to add more color. So we're going to add bushes right in the middle of both of these. So there you go. We have two bushes on each side. So these are going to be placed right there. Now the middle one will not get a bush because guess what? That is a road. That is an invisible road that we have to keep in mind. So again, we're just trying to add additional color to make everything look really nice here in our city. So, so far so good with the detailing. I'm happy with where we're at. We're definitely gonna add more. So let's go back into find it. And what we'll do is we're gonna click on sandboxes. Now, in my previous City Skylines 2 Let's Play build, we don't have any tree planters. So sandboxes honestly are the best looking asset we have to use as planners. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to space this out, but I'm trying to place down planners so that we can put trees and just not plop them down. So yeah, I use sandboxes as planners and yeah, I did this in a previous episode. So what we're going to do next is we are going to grab a linden tree. We're going to make sure that it's not an adult yet. So I would call this a teenage size tree where it's not the biggest and it's not the smallest. So we're going to place those on our planters. And if you do have any issues, I do have the move it mod from the paradox interactive mod. So again, using those as planners and putting those trees there, that it adds way more color, makes everything pop and look really nice. So now that we have those trees in place, let's keep adding more bushes and ooh, we need to make sure it's on fence mode, but we're going to add lines of bushes and these are kind of like fake hedges, so to speak, because hey, in City Skylines 2, we don't have hedges. So I just, I wanted to make this a little town area and it's a community area where people can come and go and hang out. You don't have to actually use the train to come to this area and hang out. And this is kind of like a fake park, so to speak. So this is almost like a custom park on top of a custom train station. What I want to do next is I want to look up the gazebo. Now, if many of you checked out my last video about the City Skylines 2 beach assets, I absolutely love these gazebo assets. I think they look very sharp. So I did add a couple more of those on the left hand side. Now on the right hand side, I'm trying to find it. I know we have it, but we are looking for food stalls. So I wanted to create almost like a food court. So you can see here, there you go. We found it in the parks and recreation area and we have food carts and three different food stalls. So what I'm doing is I'm going to use Anarchy and place down a couple of these food stalls. Now there's, they're just basic food stalls. You know, this is not a food stall. This is not a drink stall, but essentially we're trying to place down these food stalls just to make it look a little bit better. Now you could add the food carts. I didn't feel like the food carts were the best idea. So I just keep kept adding the food stalls themselves. So right now, ooh, we only have three different options for food stalls, which is kind of crappy, but you know, as time goes on, we will definitely have more assets and more to build, but so far so good. Now let's keep adding more sandboxes and we want to add more trees to this area because well, we have our food stalls. Now people need a place to sit. 
Now, people aren't going to sit in the middle of a tile, you know, they're not gonna just sit in the middle of a tiled area without any shade because, well, remember, this is the Sunset Beach map and it gets up to 87 degrees and extremely hot. So we wanna find some shade for them. So we're gonna grab a birch tree and we're gonna place down three of those birch trees so that there you can see there is some shade going on with um, you know some of that part of our train station. Now, what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna use what's called the table set three. So basically this is a table and chair so people can sit down, hang out and you know, they can enjoy this train station area. They could watch, they could do what's called train spotting. So instead of plane spotting, train spotting. So yeah, this overall turned out really, really nicely. I love the detailing so far. I love being able to add these assets here in City Skylines too. Now on this side, I did give up a little bit. I will finish this later on in the video. So to finish up the train station, we actually need to add a train route. So what we need to do is add the double train track station. So we need to upgrade our current line. There you go. And you could see the crisscrosses. So trains are going to literally stop in the middle of our train station area. Then we need to add the train stops themselves. So this is part of a City Skylines 2 mod. You're not able to do this without the extended transportation mod. And what this basically does is, you know how trams work? Well, this is how trains will work now in City Skylines 2 with this mod itself. So we're gonna look off to the left. We, ooh, we have no connection. So I'm gonna speed up these connections. I don't want you guys to see this. So both of our trains are connected to outside connections right now. And it does blink that there is no vehicles available. That, I don't know why, but that might be just the glitch right now because we do have a rail yard and everything should be connected. So we're gonna leave that for the time being and just kind of go on with it. But there is our custom train station. And there we go, we have a train coming. So it says there's no connection or it, the trains aren't able to connect. And look at that, it works perfectly. So our trains are connected to the outside world and we finally are starting to see a train centric town. And look at that, perfect size. Now that we have our train station in place, you're gonna notice at the bottom of the screen, we have a huge demand for low density residential and medium density residential. So just a disclaimer, I am going to start adding the commercial buildings, but disclaimer, when you see the demand bar, if you see your demand bar completely full, please make sure you don't overreact and just start placing down, you know, more commercial and more residential and start rushing. So I just wanted to give you guys that notice right now. Don't rush, it will be okay. So what I'm doing here on Main Street USA, I am adding three by four and I'm adding those size buildings so that we're gonna have the same size building and it's gonna have a very similar and a very cool uniform look. So as time goes on, you can see here, we don't have much commercial as of right now. So that's gonna fill in very slowly. So now let's focus more on the residential area. So we're waiting for commercial to fill in and actually have a demand for commercial. What we'll do next is we're going to click on the load density residential buildings. What we're gonna use is the beachfront properties assets from the new asset pack that was released the other day. So what we're gonna do is we are going to manually add all of these buildings just so we have different size buildings to choose from and it does get really tedious. So I'm gonna speed this up so you guys don't have to suffer through this whole thing. So now that we have our low density in place, I am going to add medium row houses because Main Street USA is going to be our town center. So adding a building that has more residents and a little bit more height seems a little bit plausible for the Main Street USA. Now we have all of our residential plugged in and we're waiting for demand to come back. We need to add another service. What I'm gonna build next to our coal power plant is going to be our landfill. The reason behind that is, all right, we have all this real estate right behind our rail yard. Maybe we could add commercial or industrial or something. Well, you can see here, it is way too lumpy and bumpy when you click on the contour lines. So I figured adding the landfill to this area 
would be a perfect fit because when you're creating a city skylines to landfill, you kind of have to district it. So what I'm doing right now is I'm using the blue lines and I'm creating points where the landfill circuit itself is going to fill in. Now, if we have to make it a bigger circuit, I will gladly extend out the landfill itself onto that lumpy and bumpy roads. So again, I'm using all of our utilities and I'm kind of placing them away from the town itself. So, so far so good. I'm extremely happy with the layout itself. Finally, the last zone we need to create is the industrial area. And I wanna place it on this side of the river, which is away from a residential area. The problem with this side of the river is that there are a lot of lumpies and bumpies. So what I did was I did terraform it and flatten it out a little bit. I did feel kind of bad about doing that. Usually I would want to try to follow the contours, but in this situation, it just was not appeasable and it did not work out. I just felt like just flattening everything out was for the best, honestly. So now that we have a flat piece of land, what I'm going to do is I actually want to upgrade the medium sized road from our main arterial and I wanted it to go all the way down to our rail yard and our landfill. And the reason behind that is while well, I expect a lot of traffic from our temporary industrial area and basically our landfill itself. So here is our flatland. Now let's just create a very small, boring grid. Remember, I mentioned this three times already, that this is only a temporary commercial, or excuse me, an, a temporary industrial area. We just need to meet the demand so that we can get a higher population and we can get more commercial zoning. Right now our demand is a little bit, well, okay, our commercial demand is there, but our commercial demand will increase once we actually have our industry in place. So again, very temporary, very boring. And I know this is not the sexiest thing in the world, but it's just an easy place to place it down and just zone up all of our industrial area. There you go. There's our little industrial area. It is, <laughs> it's a grid. I mean, let's be honest, it's great. So let's use the fill tool and we'll just fill all of that in. There we go. That should meet our industrial demand pretty easily and lasts us a little while. Now, what I wanna do next is everything is still filling in, so let's check it out. So, we do have a lot of demand for commercial, so what I'll do is I'm going to just do the auto fill. I like to use the word auto fill because, well, the computer and City Skyline Sioux is randomly generating buildings by me just filling that in. Now, what you're gonna notice here is I don't love the buildings that were placed down. I'm not a big fan of them, but I do like that one building I did select. So we're gonna use the Find It tool and we're gonna click on it. We're gonna delete the old ones that just did not fit what we we're looking for. We also need to dezone it because it just, that zoning did not work. Things were not rendering as I, they, they, they just did not look Good. So, so I use find it and I realize, okay, we, this is a three by six building. No, I don't like that one. You can, you can troubleshoot, but there we go. We have a three by four building low density. And I absolutely love the look of this building. It's the size of the building I wanted. It's exactly what we are looking for. We have shops and restaurants and we'll have a very uniform look. So I did just plop them down. That is, it is called a ploppable growable building. So I did plop them down and there is our main street USA. You can see people already walking on our pedestrian path and it's going a okay. Now I did get rid of the gas station on the corner because I truly did not like it, but everything else, I love those slightly bigger buildings on the end. Then I love the, the commercial buildings in the middle. Look at, there's our train. Our train is perfectly centered. Our fountain is perfectly centered and Main Street USA is perfectly centered. So, so far, so good. Now, I do want to add some more medium row houses next to our Main Street USA because, hey, we need people living here and we need more medium row houses and more residential in general. And the medium row houses is our only residential that we currently have demand for. All right, so now that we put down more row houses, what we'll do is we are, we are currently at a tiny village. What did we unlock? So we unlocked healthcare, a cemetery, and we already did the garbage management. And right now we're not a small village, so we 
can't add, you know, we can't add school. So what we'll do next is we're going to fill in our remaining commercial zoning. So I'm going to use the auto zoning and just plop that in and whatever building renders because hey that's a main arterial road so that is very realistic that it would be jam-packed with commercial buildings so i'm completely okay with the auto generation now next we do need to add healthcare. so i do want to add a medical clinic now usually i like putting medical clinics kind of within the neighborhood but in this situation, I wanted those row houses to keep that same uniformed look. So I added the medical clinic on our main arterial road, which is it, it is a little bit off to the left of our commercial zoning. But overall, it will do the trick and our, you know, our citizens will have health care and they'll have a medical clinic if they have an emergency. So, so far, so good with that. Now, what is our last service? Our last service is death care now these cemeteries are freaking humongous and right now you can see here i tried two spots i did not want to i did not want to place it in our main detail area that i'm leaving open i did not want to place it there and then i also did not want to place it where our current residential is so what i want to do was i'm going to build a small bridge and what i'll do is just use anarchy just go over it and we'll just create its own little area along the river. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to build a cemetery along the river itself. I feel like, you know, that's somewhat okay. I'm just okay with that look because it kind of looks like, I'm going to be honest with you, it kind of looks like a park and you know, it's, wow, that is big, but it does look like a park. So like a park along the river, even though it's a cemetery, you know, it, it'll, it'd be okay. I'm okay with it. Um, you know, just it's, it's an okay thing to do. So now that we have our road layout in place, let's place down our cemetery. Like I said, it is a huge asset. It's cool. And like I said, you can see here, it clearly looks like a park of some sort. So along the river actually seemed to work out pretty well. So I'm, I'm happy with that placement. And obviously as time goes on, we're going to build around it. So there's going to be residential built around it. So I'm not really too concerned having it out there so far. So, so far, so good with this build. I'm really happy with the way things have turned out. The last thing I wanted to focus on was detailing around our train station itself. So what I wanted to do was I wanted to just extend out our train station, but I didn't want to add more tile. I wanted to add a few different trees. I wanted to add a few different bushes. And you're going to see here during my detailing montage that I'm going to add a grassy surface and then I'm going to add more trees just to make it pop and look a little bit nicer. Here's the surface tool that I was talking about. Grass surface number two is the surface of grass that looks like it is a freshly cut lawn. So I'm really happy with that. And again, I'm going to keep detailing and I will see you guys on the other side. What we're doing for the last part of this build is we're just filling in some of our commercial on our main arterial road and I'm placing commercial along our train tracks because in real life that would actually happen. Train tracks are completely okay being behind a commercial building so I'm okay with that. So now that some of our commercial will render in, there you go, you can see that it's along the train tracks. It should fill in really nicely. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to fill in the last part of a residential area, so please enjoy the montage. So welcome back. Here is the finished product of today's build. You can see here the medium row house buildings look absolutely uniformed and amazing. And here is our fully custom detailed train station here in City Skylines 2. Now I do have a sign called Sports Park, but hey, in City Skylines 2 we don't have an asset called Park. So I, bear with me. And then here is our fully detailed food court, food area. And you can see here we have invisible paths. So people are walking around our train station area. So this is a place to congregate. We do have an info booth right there. I don't know what it said in that building, but it did, it did label info booth when I did place it down. So our 
everything looks amazing so far. I'm really happy with everything. And here's our pedestrian road and all of our commercial buildings. And I know that they're the same asset, different roof color, but I love the uniformity of it. And it just looks really perfect. And I love the people walking around and oh, it just looks good. And then as soon as I do that, a van pulls out of our pedestrian road. <laughs> Anyways, um, overall though, very happy with the way our build turned out so far. Now I do want to get into our low density residential. We can get into that, but there is our medium size row houses and that area. Now let's spin the screen around. You can see here we have this empty lot. This will be for the next episode. We're going to fill that in. That is empty on purpose. Now let's look at our low density residential. You can see here, here are the beach assets. These are the North American low density houses. I think these look absolutely amazing. And I think it fits really well with the Florida theme with all the pools and stuff like that. And I did make sure I added trees. Now, I guess in hindsight, I should have used palm trees, but I didn't, but overall it's okay. I'm not too upset about it. Now, going back to our train platform real quick, I did add the lawn mode grass. Now, let me know in the comment section below, what should I add there? I haven't quite figured out what to add on both sides besides the bushes and the trees and stuff like that, but I'm gonna figure it out in the future. I'm not really sure. I know a parking lot needs to be in that area, but thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it. Please hit that like button and subscribe for more City Skylines too.